again, welcome to a Christmas Eve service. We're glad you're here. We're going to stand and sing together, O Come All Ye Faithful. O come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. tonight. It's good to see each and every one of you online joining us. Thank you for being here tonight as we remember and focus on the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Over the last several weeks, we've lit four different candles, each representing a different theme, the themes of hope, the themes of peace, of joy, and of love. And tonight, we are going to light the center candle, which is the Christ candle, which represents the birth of Christ and this idea that Christ is the light of the world. And we are reminded that just as he was born in a manger in Bethlehem, there was a light that came. And so he still lights up our lives today as the light of the world. Amen. Let's worship. Let's sing Hark the Herald Angels Sing.
Jesus the Messiah was born. His mother, Mary, was engaged to be married to Joseph, but before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her fiancé, was a good man and did not want to disgrace her publicly, so he decided to break the engagement quietly. As he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, Son of David, the angel said, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit. And she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. We're going to invite the children to come while we're singing just a verse of angels from the realms of glory, and we're going to sing Go Tell It on the Mountain together. So would you come and stand right up here by me and... Mr. Josh, come on up. Angels from the realms of glory, wing your flight for all the earth. He who sang creation's story, now proclaim Messiah's birth. Come and worship, come and worship.
And because Joseph was a decent man, a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary, his fiancée, who, who was now obviously pregnant. And while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. She gave birth to her first child, a son, 
She wrapped him in snuggling, snuggling strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging available for them. The shepherds were out in the countryside and the angels appeared and made an announcement to them and this is one of the things they might have sung if they sang. Angels we have heard on high sweetly singing o'er the plains and the mountains in reply echoing their joyous praise.
That night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified. But the angel reassured them, Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all the people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth lying in a manger. Any kids want to head back to the children's room? You're welcome to. Good evening. Good to see each and every one of you here. Good to see each and every one of you online. We're so thankful that you could join us uh, online tonight and be here with us. And, and also for those who are joining in not live, uh, we welcome you. We're glad that uh, you could worship with us tonight as we celebrate a very, very important day in the Christian calendar, which often gets overlooked by all the craziness of the season. We are so guilty of that. Um, but if you haven't got your candle yet, in just a few moments, we are going to be lighting candles together, which represents the light of Christ in our lives and in our world. So if you haven't yet received a candle, we have some just as you come in. Please uh, get a candle, because in just a few moments, we will be lighting those candles, and um, just as an act of remembrance, you know, as we're gathered together as the church, that, that Jesus is the candle, the, the fire, the light that lights our lives. It's so interesting, um, in, a, in a pitch black room, because you look at a candle, it doesn't seem like it produces that much light, but in a pitch black room, a candle makes a big difference. And so as we light these candles tonight and um, as we as we just as we sing, as we look at the flame, as we are reminded that Jesus is our light, uh, maybe we can just envision um, Jesus as the candle, as the light, which carries us through li through life. You know, this year has been an interesting year for many. It's been a tragic year, a confusing year, a difficult year, a year of loss whether we've lost a loved one or whether we've lost a job or whether we've lost something that we love doing that's been shut down or altered or something like that, um, whether we, you know, we feel like we've lost a sense of our freedom, I know many of us have. Uh, loss is a word that can maybe define 2020 for us, different types of loss everywhere. And so 2020 has been quite a year um, 
And, and, and maybe we could look at 2020 and uh, we might label it a dark year, a year of lots, of lots of darkness, lots of unknowns, lots of death, lots of loss. Um, all, all the more important to remember that Jesus, as we light this candle, Jesus is the light that guides us as we walk through a dark room. Have you ever lit a candle in, 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 a, in a pitch black room? Have you ever lit a candle and seen how big of a difference it makes? It doesn't seem like it would with ac- you know, the actual lights on, but in a dark room, it makes such a difference. And we are reminded as we light these candles, as we hold these candles, that Jesus is the candle. Jesus is the light that guides us, even through 2020. Even through 2020, he guides us like a guiding light. Um, and it's so interesting, because I was just thinking this week, there's this period in the history of God's people called the intertestamental period, and maybe you've heard of that before. The intertestamental period is a period between the Old Testament and the New Testament. Maybe you've heard of it. We don't talk about it very much, because it's all, it was a 400-year period which was known as the 400 years of silence. The 400 years of silence. In other words, it was a 400-year period where God didn't speak to his people. You know, in the Old Testament, if you remember, there was lots of prophets who spoke. Um, And then, of course, in the New Testament, in 0 AD, Jesus was born. But there was this 400-year period where God seemingly didn't speak. And the people were were uh, kind of losing faith. They were kind of losing hope. See, the Messiah had been promised in generations past, but he was not here yet. So this intertestamental period is known as the silent years. These years where they just couldn't really hear God speaking. It was also a time where we saw historical figures like Alexander the Great. Maybe you remember him from history class. Alexander the Great come in and spread Greek philosophy and, and, and kind of that whole culture throughout the known land at the time. Um, and so God's people found themselves very worried, very worried that their way of life, very worried that their religion, everything they knew, their worship was slowly fading away. The culture was coming in. The culture was coming in of you know, the Greek gods and goddesses, polytheism, the culture was coming in and sort of wiping away that traditional Hebrew, Jewish, God-worshipping culture that God's people enjoyed for many, many generations. New rulers, new emperors came in. Herod, um, you know, the different rulers that we read about um, in the beginning of the New Testament were were, these Greek rulers were coming in and, and sort of changing things changing things, and God's people found themselves um, in a lot of confusion, in a world that was constantly changing. And over time, they started to speak the Greek language, even more so than their own Hebrew language. Their traditions, uh, their cultures that, that they kind of grew up knowing, maybe their kids or their grandkids didn't follow those traditions and cultures the same way. And so they were worried, they were scared, they were crying out, God, where are you? God, where are you? There's so much darkness all around. These were known as the silent, the silent years, these 400 years um, in between the Old Testament and the New Testament. But the birth of Jesus brought hope. The birth of Jesus brought hope to a weary people, and it brought light. It brought guidance, just like a candlelight. A simple candle can really produce quite a bit of light in a pitch black room. The light of Jesus' birth was so exciting. Just try to imagine you know, in their shoes. Try to imagine yourself in their shoes, how significant the birth of Christ was, even though they were feeling very hopeless, even though they hadn't heard from God through the prophets in a long time. You know, they'd heard the Messiah promised in years past. And we'll look at one of these promises in Malachi chapter 3. Malachi is the last book in the Old Testament. And, and we'll read these three verses. The, the prophet tells us, look, I am sending my messenger and he will prepare the way before me. Then the Lord you are seeking will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant, whom you look for so eagerly, is surely coming, says the Lord of heaven's armies. But who will be able to endure it when he comes? Who will be able to stand and face him when he appears? For he will be like a blazing fire that refines metal, or like a strong soap that bleaches clothes. Verse 3. He will sit like a refiner of silver, burning away the dross. 
He will purify the Levites, refining them like gold and silver, so that they may once again offer acceptable sacrifices to the Lord. And we see many, many promises like this throughout the Old Testament. The book of Malachi was the last book in the Old Testament promising this Messiah that's going to come and, and really clean people's hearts, really help people along, really sanctify God's people and make them holy. Um, you know, but there got to be a point where that was like literally hundreds, 200, 300, 400 years ago that was prophesied and God's people were losing hope. They were hanging on by a thread. They still had the scriptures. They were hanging on by a thread, but they kept saying, they kept crying out, God, where is this Messiah? God, where is this Savior? And then one night in Bethlehem, lying in the manger, baby Jesus was born, and it was like a light, a candle light in a pitch black room. All of a sudden, there was excitement, there was joy, there was hope, because the Messiah was here. Um, and perhaps, in a sense, we can, we can relate to all this, you know, especially as we are ending this very crazy year of 2020. Um, we can relate a little bit to the hopelessness, to the confusion, you know, that God's people were feeling. Because 2020 has been quite a year, but we are reminded that Jesus brings us light, even during confusing times even during times of loss, even when we don't know what the future brings. And we still don't know what the future brings. And when this whole virus started, we thought maybe it would last like a couple weeks or maybe a month. And, and we thought, well, it'll just, it'll just die with the summer heat. And now here we are still dealing with it. But, you know, Jesus is our guiding light. And if we lean on him, if we rely on him, if we place our hope and trust in Jesus, he will be like a candle in a pitch black room. And so as we light these candles in just a few moments, just, just envision this candle as Jesus being your guiding light. I don't know what it is that we're dealing with tonight. Maybe it's loss of some kind, loss of family, loss of friends, loss of a job, loss of a way of life, loss of a certain thing that you love doing that's been you know, canceled or postponed due to the virus, whatever it is, um, we can follow Jesus as he is our guiding light. And the theme of light is actually all over scripture. Um, there's lots of verses that refer to God, to Jesus as the light, because he is just like a, like a light to our lives in so many ways. Let's read the book of Isaiah, uh, chapter 9, verses 1 and 2. And this is, a, this is a prophecy, again, a prophecy about Jesus. Here's what it says. Nevertheless, that time of darkness and despair will not go on forever. The land of Zebulun and Naphtali will be humbled, but there will be a time in the future when Galilee of the Gentiles, which lies along the road that runs between the Jordan and the sea, will be filled with glory. The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. For those who live in a land of deep darkness, a light will shine. And perhaps we might look around and say, well, the land I live in feels pretty dark sometimes. Um, we have the light of Jesus guiding us. We know that there's darkness around us, you know. We know that there is. There's hopelessness all around us, especially this year. There's hopelessness, confusion, chaos, fear everywhere. But Jesus is the light that guides us through, and we need him now more than ever. Um, and, and so as, as we light this candle in just a couple moments, let it represent Jesus being the light of your life, whatever it is that you're going through. Um, I'm going to look at, the, look at the book of John, chapter 1, verses 4 and 5. There's, there's quite a few verses which refer to Jesus as the light. And, uh, and here's what we see in the book of John, chapter 1. It says, The Word gave life to everything that was created, and His life brought light, brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. You know, we carry with us a light that can never be extinguished, a light that guides us through dark times. 
And then just fast forward a few chapters in John chapter 8, verse 12. Another one where Jesus spoke to the people once more and said, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. Let's hang on to this promise tonight. Let's hang on to this promise this Christmas season that if we follow Jesus, we won't have to walk alone. If we follow Jesus, we won't have to walk in darkness. If we feel like we're going through a confusing time, a difficult time, a time that is stressful or filled with anxiety, we don't have to walk the walk alone. We can lean on Jesus and follow him as our light. He is right there all around us all the time. All we must do is get on our knees and pray, Jesus, I give it all to you, and today I follow you. Give me guidance, give me wisdom, give me peace, and we will be filled with his wisdom, with his peace, with his guidance. Let's make this a daily habit of lighting our candle every single day. Metaphorically speaking, we're going to light this candle in just a moment. But metaphorically speaking, every single day we can light the candle, which is Jesus guiding us through our day, which is Jesus guiding us through life. If you face a, a day or a time or a situation that's confusing, that where you, where you don't really know what to do, you don't really know which way to turn, you don't really know how to handle this situation, you ever been there maybe recently? Or you're experiencing some difficult loss, you're experiencing just a tough time. I know that many of us have been there in 2020 and years past. Let's be reminded that we can carry this candle with us. We can carry the light with us, which is Jesus and the Holy Spirit living in us as Christians. So let's just be reminded of that tonight, this Christmas Eve, as we remember, as we celebrate the birth of Jesus, the birth of hope. Can you imagine the hope God's people had when they heard about the birth of Jesus. I mean, we read the story about it tonight, but just try to imagine it in your own heart. How exciting that was. Here is the promised Messiah for hundreds of years. Here he is, and he sure came and changed everything. Let's be reminded of that tonight, and let's be reminded um, as we light these candles, let's be reminded of the hope that Jesus brings us, the light that Jesus brings brings us. Jesus is the light. Even in the midst of 2020, Jesus is our light. So I'm going to light this candle, and then I'm going to come, come by you row by row, and you can help light each other's candles, and then we're going to uh, sing, uh, sing a song, Silent Night. Call the worship team back up, and I'm going to light our candles, and
the glory. We'll give you all the glory. We'll give you all the glory. Christ the Lord. Amen. I'm going to read our benediction, and then we will be dismissed. But as we, as we leave this place, um, let's just remember to carry the light with us. Whatever our day brings, whatever our week brings, whatever the season of life brings, let's uh, be reminded to carry the light with us, because we have access to the light, which brings light anywhere we are, light in the darkness. And so as we exit, uh, you can just extinguish your candle and and place it back in the basket as you leave. Um, Amen. May the light of Christ, the light of Jesus, which brings light to our lives, be our light this Christmas season and in the rest of this year of 2020, and into 2021 and beyond, we go in peace to love and serve the Lord. May he be our light. In the name of Christ, amen. Glory to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her key. Christmas.